All right. This is the third of my series of videos explaining my prostate surgery, prostatectomy. Removed my prostate on June 21st, 2021. This is day 11. And boy, have I got a story for you. I'll make this short and sweet today because I just want to concentrate on what happened yesterday. Um, on July 1st, 2021. And tell them about that date, Frank. A date which will live in infamy. You heard him. Now, of course, my surgery date was very, very important. However, um, I've been carrying around this catheter for 10 days, and that's normal after a surgery. And yesterday I went to the doctor's office to get it removed. And it's not removed by the doctor, it's removed by a nurse. So me and my wife, myself and my wife and the nurse were in the room. And um, she removed this catheter. Now, this is very important because I had looked at other videos to find out what happens, you know, after surgery and everything. And I got a good, lot of good advice and a lot of good um, experience from other people. But I never heard about really what happened as far as removal of the catheter. I, I must have missed that or something or they're not saying it. I don't know. But I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. So if you're not here for to hear about the details of prostate surgery after prostate surgery, you can turn it off now. But I'm going to give you the, uh, the details. There's blood involved. I didn't know this. Um, I go there. I had taken something like a diaper, but I didn't take it in the doctor's office with me. I figured if I needed one that they would give me one. Well, that didn't happen. So, I'm lying there, and before... They take the catheter out, she fills it with saline solution because, and I forget the whole medical terminology, but she needs to inflate the bladder for some reason. Now, when they stick that catheter up there in the surgery, they inflate a balloon so it stays there. It can't be pulled out easy. So I don't know if the saline solution burst the bubble, burst the balloon or whatever, I'm just finding this stuff out. And she says there's going to be a I'm going to I'm going to snap this catheter out and so you'll you'll feel a twinge. <sighs> no, that was pain. That was really the most painful thing that has happened since the surgery. Um she pulled that catheter out because I asked her before, am I going to scream? And she says, oh, I don't think so. But I wanted to scream. They need to have handles so I can hold on when they pull that out. Because for one second, it was only one second of pain. I can tell you that. She pulled that out. Ah! It hurt. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, sugarcoat it. It hurt. But it only hurt for one second. And I was relieved. For one thing, I was relieved now. There's no catheter in there. But she pulled that thing out, and whoo, that sent a pain through my body, but it only lasted one second, and I was relieved. And then, of course, she took the staples out. The staples coming out did nothing. Um, they, that, that wasn't painful at all. You know, you, she said, you'll feel a little twinge, but yeah, that's what all it was. So, and then she put steri strips on the staples and said leave those on for 10 days when you take a shower don't soak those just the water can run on them but just let them stay for 10 days and then you can take them off so the staples are out the catheter is out and these things i didn't know how that was going to go i, I had never been told so i'm telling you what to expect like i said the paint the it was painful for the catheter to come out. However, it, I'm serious. It literally was only one second. It was a jolt and then actually relief. 
because I didn't feel the catheter anymore, and there was it was gone, and I was I was good to go. And then the doctor came in and answered any questions. He told me um, again that, um, and this is the first time he's telling me because he had told my wife before that um, he he was able to get the prostate out. Um, he didn't have to take any nerves out or any lymph nodes because they all looked good. They didn't look like they had cancer on them. Of course, everything's been sent to pathology. Uh, the initial reports from pathology are good, but in four weeks he'll schedule me for to come in and get a PSA test, and they'll do a couple tests then. And he told me, let me see, these things he told me, do the kegels. He says, I want you to do a very aggressive kegel. Now before, before the surgery, he had told me to do a, a hundred. Hold it tight for 10 seconds, which I'm doing now. Hold it tight for 10 seconds and let it go. And he told me to do that 100 times a day, several times a day, um, and add up to 100. Now he's saying 200 times a day. So I'll be doing this, and this is gets your continence back to full strength. You know, get your muscles back because, you know, those had, they had to cut through muscle. But he told me, he explained a lot about the surgery. The, the value of the robotic surgery, with a regular scalpel, you've got to go through muscle fiber. With robotic surgery, they can be more precise and don't have to cut against the grain of muscle fiber. It's a medical thing, but, you know, I kind of understand that they can go more, uh, more precise. And I've seen videos on the Internet where they actually have the videos of the surgery and those the surgery the robot has hands and they can go in circles that the wrist can't do so they can do things the surgeon can't do and no I'm not Spider-Man but they can move that those scissor arms around so um, I asked him this question I told him it was a stupid question, but I asked this question because my father, right after he retired, when he was he retired when he's 56, so soon after he retired, his appendix burst, and so he had to be rushed to the hospital, and they had to take the um, appendix out. However, it left some poison. You know, the appendix has poison in it, and for two days. This was back in the middle 80s. He was, um, it was touch and go whether he'd live or not. So, and, and you know, anatomically, the uh, appendix is right there beside the prostate. And I asked him this question. I said, could the robot be retrofit to take out the appendix the same time you take out the um, prostate? Because I would be willing to go through that. I don't. I, we don't need the appendix, so I would have taken it out, and that way I don't have to worry about appendicitis, because if I ever have to do it again, they're going to have to go in the same way. He says, uh, they're not going to go in the same way, they're going to go off to the side. You know, he explained it medically. He said, but no, I don't think the robot could be. I said, well, if you do, name it after me and you, you know, if you get that. Because if they asked me, I would have said yes. Take the appendix while you're in there, take the appendix out also. Uh, again, again, my father recovered, fully recovered, but um, that poison nearly killed him early because he had a 19-year retirement. Otherwise, he would have had a, like a two- or three-year retirement. So I just asked that question, and um, he, ex he actually explained that in the surgery, because I told him about my experience, I saw the robot off to the side. He said, yes, once we put you to sleep, Here's my head, and you know, you're laying on the table. Here's my head, here's my feet. We actually raise this, your feet up. Or is it the other way around? I may have it backwards. No, I think he raises, yeah, raise the feet up, and your head's lower. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because that moves the intestines out of the way. You know, gravity. I didn't know that. I hadn't seen that anywhere. So... That was interesting. Um, 
However, when I got out of the doctor's office and walked to the car and everything, I felt good. I was with my normal gait because when I came in, I was holding the catheter band up and all that. But I, it was normal. Okay, skip to when I got home. Let's cut to the detail, cut to the chase. Um, my underwear were wet. I should have had a diaper on the whole time. And it was wet with urine and blood. It is a bloody thing. All last night, I was urinating blood and urine. And the first time I did it, I'm looking in the toilet and I'm just... I'm just a mess. What the heck? I called my wife. I was almost like, uh, you remember Fred Sanford? It's the big one. Elizabeth, I'm coming. So you remember that. I know you do. Um, if you don't look it up. So I call her and there's blood and urine and splatters of blood around the toilet. And I'm all startled by this whole thing, she comes in and says, huh, now you see what I've been dealing with most of my life. <laughs> so, hats off to the women of the world. I, 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 that was an eye opener. Yes, you have gone through this. That didn't start a horror her at all. Okay? So, yes, when you go get your catheter out, Wear a diaper, be, have diapers ready, be, pull-ups is fine, and they work fine. And because all last night I was urinating, when I urinated, it was blood and urine. This morning, pure urine, no blood. So hopefully I'm on the way to healing because the nurse explained, if you don't heal, the next, next week is very important. If you don't heal, and that means poop and urine normally, if you don't get there, we may have to put that catheter in another week. So, you know, if that happens, that happens. But I'm going to try to heal. I'm still taking it easy. I'm watching everything. So, you know, again, I'm fighting cancer. That's, that's, the, whole, that's the whole thing. That's the whole deal. Um, like, uh, Morgan, Mr. Morgan said, Morgan Freeman, you know, in the movie, I'm not going to say the name of the movie, I don't want any copyright infringement or anything, but he said, get busy living or get busy dying. All right? So, hey, I'm going to get busy living and I'm going to do the right thing, but I just want to bring that to your attention for the day that the catheter gets removed. Um be prepared. All right, until next time, have a blessed day.